Honesty really, really matters. And I think much of the reason why I started this podcast was to give the world the much needed honesty it needs, but often doesn't get. You hear success stories that are glamorized and that are oversimplified, but that's rarely, rarely the case. This week's guest will give you exactly that. Raw, unfiltered honesty, like you've never heard it before. And in some points, honesty that might make you a little bit uncomfortable. It made her uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable. This week, I'm joined by Chrissy Chella. She's an unbelievable, and in my opinion, heavily underrated entrepreneur, running multiple multi-million pound businesses. She's one of the, the UK's number one fitness creators, athletes, whatever you want to call her. She's an author. Her book is coming out in January. She has a remarkable story, one that starts from very, very humble beginnings as an immigrant that was bullied on the playground in the UK. And what you'll find out about her is inspiring. It's captivating. It's real. One of the most amazing conversations I've ever had on this podcast. And I'm so glad that we can bring you her story in this way, told with total honesty. Without further ado, I'm Stephen Bartlett, and this is The Diary of a CEO. I hope nobody is listening, but if you are, then please keep this to yourself. As I did a little bit of research on you and I got to sort of uncover your story and I got to stalk you a little bit on social media, um, the more and more that I observed and sort of looked past your Instagram feed, the more I saw a pretty remarkable entrepreneur and business person. And one of the thoughts that came to my mind, and you know, this podcast is all about speaking your truth and being honest, was this question, which is, do you think that you get the credit you deserve? As an entrepreneur? That's the question. Um, it's not about me. I haven't built a community about me. I've built a community about helping other women. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's never fully been about me. And the credit that I get is seeing other women thrive and succeed and come together. And that for me is enough credit. I don't need an award. I don't need someone to say, oh my God, you're the best businesswoman in the world. For me, when I see, or when I read another woman's story, that for me is enough. Mm -hmm. I don't need anything else. So yeah, I do. So, cause I was, when I, I was watching some of your stories on Instagram and you, you run an office, right? Mm -hmm. Of people, you run multiple businesses, mm -hmm. right? And I typically think that people are very, very quick to arrive at judgment when they see a pretty young lady who's worked out on Instagram, who has a big following. And they, t and this is just being completely honest. They mm -hmm. tend to come to judgments very quickly. A conclusion. A conclusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that conclusion and that narrative or that image that they form of that person I've come to learn is usually severely wrong a hundred percent it is and you know it's funny you say that because I've also been on multiple dates with people and you know they see my Instagram following and they automatically assume that oh it's because you get your ass out that's 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 why you make money or it's because you get your ass out that's why you've built what you've built and the truth is if I did that and if that was the fundamental reason, then I wouldn't have a team of 30 people in one company and build in another company that sells out every time we restock. It goes past being a pretty face or a pretty picture. It goes past being a nice body. It's about the message that you have. It's about what you want to truly, truly put out in the world. And I think if people make that conclusion, it says more about them than it does to me. How does it make you feel though? And I want you to be really honest here. How does it make you feel? I think, okay, like I'm going to be completely honest. Please. I think it's one thing to be judged and it's another thing to be judged as a woman. Okay, so why is it that when you see a handsome man, you don't come to a conclusion that he only got what he got because he's handsome? Why is it as a woman, I have to justify myself more? I have to explain myself more all the time. It's draining. I shouldn't have to explain myself. My face, my body, all of this stuff, it's just external, you know? And I think that, 
can I swear on this? Of course you can. Of course you can. <laughs> I'm like, can I, I swear? Do it all the time. I swear on my YouTube all the time. Yeah, Some people on. get offended. Yeah. I'm like, listen, this is this is who listen I am. To something else. Yeah. <laughs> no, it pisses me off. It mm. pisses me off. But at the same time, it's like it feeds me. Right. You know, it feeds me. Like, piss me off even more because that's how I thrive. You you saying to me I can't do something. You saying to me that I only got there because of this and that. It pushes me more to achieve more. And yeah, I mean, it's their problem, not mine, I guess. There's a lot of, you know, let's just for a second, imagine that that judgment of you was correct and that you'd got here because you were pretty or whatever, or you're, you know, you have a, a great physique or whatever it was. Um, what would they be missing? What is the truth? What, why, why did you get here? Because there are lots of very pretty people out there, right? Yeah. Um, but for some reason you made it here and, and I've seen your businesses. I've looked into them. You have pretty phenomenal businesses and you're running big teams of people in big offices. So like there's two kind of thoughts to this, but I think the central question that I'm trying to get an answer for myself is what is it about Chrissy that differentiated you, your approach, your message, and the way that you connect with people from all of these other people that are trying to do what you're doing? I think in all honesty, if I'm, if I'm answering that question from a personal perspective, I've always been 100% honest and transparent with who I am. You're not going to find a hidden secret or some nasty surprise. Like, this is who I am. You literally either take it or you leave it. And I'm not going to try and be anything else to fit in for anybody else, you know? Mm. And for me... When I started my fitness journey, when I, you know, moved countries to England, I never felt like I had a sense of home. I never felt like anybody understood me. So to be blessed with a platform where I can build a community and bring women together globally, you know, this is, this goes beyond me. This is about bringing women together that have been abused, that have had, you know, mental disorders, eating disorders, such bad things you couldn't even imagine what women have gone through and have told me to bring them all together and to create this tribe you know that for me is like I think that's what people see yeah and I think that's what people believe I want to do because I genuinely do want to do that and you know one of the things that sorry to interrupt there but I really wanted to one of the things you said was about you being yourself and I asked you that question actually with a bit of a preconceived idea of what the answer would be and when I watch you on Instagram the feel that I get from you versus pretty much everybody else other than one other person I've got to be honest and he sat in this chair and he's actually coming back is Joe Wicks mm -hmm. like when I met Joe Wicks he is the guy you meet off 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 air or whatever is the same guy and he's so fucking genuine and all he cares about is like genuinely helping people but the reason i said to joe i said i think the reason you're so successful is because you are yourself and yeah. you will share it all and when I, when I was watching you on instagram and watching some of your videos you cater to the 99 percent of people's lives which is the real shit yeah i saw your video this week you did on your story you waking up and you're saying listen i don't want to wake up today and most people don't admit that because, you know, a lack of perfection is sometimes perceived as weakness. So mm -hmm. I wondered how that resonated with you in terms of the importance of your success originating from Chrissy being her truest self. Yeah, you're, you can only be the best version of yourself, right? And I think if you stop trying to be something else soon enough, it will come out mm. or you'll start to fall through the cracks or it will slip. Something will slip. Mm. And you can only uphold that image and, you know, that presence for so long before it really just fucks up. Mm. So the only thing you can do is be the best version of yourself. And this is what I tell people all the time. It's never been about other people's perceptions of you. It's always been what you think about yourself. And if you truly, truly believe in yourself, you won't want to be anybody else. You, wanna, you, you won't want to be fake. You wouldn't want to be trying to please everyone my job isn't to please everyone were you always at that point no tell me about that oh my god no i mean i remember when i was in a relationship i was 16 years old i was like oh my god, i'm gonna marry this person i'm so in love <laughs> like this is it uh and then he cheated on me and i was like oh shit this is not it what's his name no <laughs> <laughs> he does not deserve the airtime i'll tell you that much but i was heartbroken and 
I was trying so hard to please this person. You know, I was trying so hard, even in school, I know it sounds petty, but I was trying so hard to fit in all the time, all the time. I remember like, this is so, this is not cute on my end. I'm gonna be honest with you. I remember being at school and I'm foreign, okay? Like <laughs> I'm Mediterranean, we're hairy, okay? And I had a, mu- no, I had a mustache and the girls used to rip me for it. And I was so sad. I was like, oh my God, why am I not like these pretty English girls? Like, I don't understand. Like, I used to feel so shitty about myself, constantly trying to like fit in. And then when I got cheated on, I was like, oh my God, it must be because I'm not pretty enough. It must be because I'm not sexy enough. Fuck that. That's draining. What do you mean I constantly have to be something else for someone else? I'm never going to be happy. And I, I wasn't happy for such a long time. So yeah, I just, I just fully like exposed my mustache story there. Oh, but. that's fine. So let's take us from mustache to, <laughs> to self-confidence. Um, what was that journey and what, what changed your, uh, your, your self-esteem and your self-confidence? What helped you get that confidence in yourself? I think for me, it was... Can we just, I think that should be the podcast title, must I? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, seriously, even Sarah doesn't know that. <laughs> I used to have a, no, guys, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? Like, I don't give a fuck. I had a moustache growing up, okay? And all the girls used to rip me the fuck up. They used to be like, ugh, you're a man, you're a boy. Like, honestly, bitchy shit, man. <laughs> and I ate my school dinner for six months in a toilet because I didn't have any friends. Do you think that experience is part of the reason you are who you are today? 100%. Like, honestly, it's pretty impossible to to break me. And when you've broken me, understand that you've really, like, broken me down. Because it takes a lot now. Was that... We talk about the the mustache, mustache thing as if it was this sort of trivial thing. But I'm guessing what you're saying is you were bullied in school. Yeah, But at the same time, it's not like I was constantly bullied. Like, I think, I don't know, a lot of us go through awkward stages in school, trying to Mm. make friends, trying to be with a cool gang, trying to do this, trying to do that. Then you almost become like mean as well because you're so hurt by everybody else Mm. that you you only, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, like I remember walking into sixth form one time and a lot of personal things happened in my life and no one wanted to be around me at Mm. that point. And I just hated everyone around me. And I was full of anger, constant anger and hate, Mm. you know, and I didn't want to be that person anymore, especially after being cheated on. I didn't want to be that person anymore. And I remember being on the train one day because I used to work in Potter's Bar at the time um, in this little men's boutique, like retail shop. And I was coming back home and I remember like the penny dropped and I was like, I can try so hard to be sexy and cool and all this stuff for other people, but I'm not doing anything for myself. And that's where the quote, do this for you comes from. Because I signed up to the gym that day and then I walked straight back out and didn't go back for two months. I'm not going to be, I'm not going (laughs) to lie to you. I was signed up and I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I know what to do. Signed up, didn't come back for two months. I was like, fuck that shit. I ain't going back. I don't know what to do. Why didn't you go? Cause I was scared. I was like, who, I was like, who do you, who do you think you are, Chrissy? Trying to be like a fitness girl. You don't know what you're doing. You know, this was like six years ago. You don't know what you're doing. Go back home, relax, right? Relax, chill, go to work, study, relax. At some point you must've changed your mind. Yeah, I did. I did. And <laughs> Evidently. I did. And I was like, uh, okay, no, I need to do this. Like, what am I doing? I'm so lethargic. I'm tired all the time. I'm not strong. I was never like um, overweight or underweight. I was just tired all the time and drained, especially mentally. So when I got into the gym, I remember looking at the leg press machine and I was like, what is this transformer? I don't know what the fuck to do with this machine. And everybody else around me seemed to kind of know what to do. And then there was like men there and the women were on the cardio machines and the men were at the weights. I didn't care about the cardio machine. I was so intrigued by the weights. I was like, what? why do men go there? What is it about men that go there and women go there? I want to go there. And I didn't know how to use weights. I didn't know what I was doing. I was training 
I didn't have anything like no one was on Instagram at the time no one was teaching the way social media has literally opened up a book full of information and free content and we didn't I didn't have that at the time I started you know mm. I didn't know what I was doing so how did you I learned you learned I just learned I just was like you know what I'm just gonna do this and I kind of I kind of got addicted to the feeling of how completing a workout made me feel and I started going again and again and I started learning because what was it doing for you going it was giving me my therapy therapy from what from life from my reality from the fact that I was so depressed or with who I was and so angry at the world and everything the world had done to me and the only time I felt like I could escape was at the gym, which is so crazy because the gym is like a chore for people. It's like, oh, I've got, to, I've got to fucking train today. Mm. But I went there and I escaped. Mm. It was therapy. And no one could take that feeling away from me. Not an ex-boyfriend that cheated on me. Not a mean girl at school. Not a horrible boss. No one. Isn't it funny that so much of you know, when you speak to people that have achieved great things, it all seems to have been sparked by like an earlier catalyst of being bullied or feeling insecure or or inadequate in some way. I I see the same in myself. The reason why I am successful without a shadow of a doubt is because the feeling of being broke and being inadequate in the area that I lived in and having all the windows on my house smashed for a decade and the grass being six foot high and but living in all of these around all of these white people zero black people at my school other than my brother and my other brother that feeling of inadequacy put pressure on me for like 15 16 years and so my obsession as I wrote in my diary at 18 mm. was I'm gonna have a, a million pounds before I'm 25 I'm gonna have a, a Range Rover is gonna be my first car right couldn't even drive Do you know it's so funny I did the same right I swear, and it's so funny you say you was the only black man in your school because I was the only foreign guy on mine. I was trying to contend with this whole idea of having curly hair. I was like, <laughs> I, I started relaxing it when I was 12 so it'd be straight. And it, and, and I look back and I think if I hadn't have gone through that in the way that I had- You wouldn't be where you are today. Not a fucking shadow of a doubt. Mm-hmm. Not a, and, and it's like that pressure mm-hmm. releases at some point. 100%. In different ways. I could have ended up in prison. Yeah. Right? My, 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 friend said, my best friend said to me at 18, he said, Steve, and I remember where I stood when he said it. He said, you're either going to be- a millionaire or you're going to be in prison. Mm -hmm. And it it hit me like a ton of bricks because he was telling the truth. Mm -hmm. I cared so much about escaping from that pressure and from that life that it was going to channel itself into something. So tell me about your diary. What did you write in your diary? Oh God. I remember, it's so funny, right? I remember I wrote down and I will never, ever forget. I wrote down, I'm going to be someone one day. I wrote, I wrote that down. And then I remember you remember you have blackberries. Yeah. Right. back in the day <laughs> and I used to write in my Blackberry and I just believed it mm. and anyway when I went to the gym and kind of figured it out along the way um I fell in love with someone at the gym that mm. I was going he's now my ex-fiance by the way everyone we're no longer together <laughs> but he is a very important person in this story because when I met him, I was at rock bottom, but I was also trying to find my feet and I was becoming more confident in myself. And that confidence did grow and attract the person that I was supposed to be with at the time, right? Because I do believe your, your vibe and energy attract the people that you have around you, right? And I remember he was driving me to work one day because I was waitressing. And I looked at him and I said, I don't know why I started Instagram at this point. I had like 50,000 followers. I started Instagram. In all honesty, I started it just to see how I looked doing exercises. And Hollywood recalled me. And I was like, oh my God, I look, I'm going to break my back. I don't know what I'm doing. I need to <laughs> fix my form. But somehow people started loving it. Mm. And anyway, he was driving me to work and I go, Jack, I don't know why, but I feel like we're going to achieve something by helping women. And do you know what he said to me? He goes, yeah, whatever, man. You get to work, I'll come pick you up. <laughs> I was like, no, I feel it. And I started crying, crying, streams of tears. 
He was like, what's wrong with you? I was like, no, I believe it. I don't know what it is. It's this feeling I can't explain. Never had that feeling before. And here we are today. <laughs> what do you think that feeling was? Belief. Where did that belief come from? Me. I just believed in me so much that no one, not even, you know, the person I was with could sway me another way. And I do think a lot of that comes from persevering in the gym mm. and growing that discipline. Mm. And growing evidence, right? Yeah. That you could, right? Yeah. Because when you are when you start doing something good for yourself, training was good for me, right? You start to build these disciplines and habits and consistencies and they transfer in other aspects of your life. It's like a domino effect. Yeah. So... I started becoming more disciplined at university. I didn't need 10 cans of Red Bull to stay awake. I was focused. Um, I would excel all the time. And it, it wasn't because I put in extra hours. It was because I was so hyper-focused where I was, with who I was. I was present. And if it wasn't for the gym, I wouldn't be able to have done that. So your ex fiance Yeah. Jack. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do you think you would have met him had you not built the confidence within yourself or started to build the confidence within yourself that the gym had given you? Do you think you would have been ready, quote unquote, to have that relationship with him at that time if you were the old Chrissy? No. Um, and if I did, if I was with someone at the time, I wasn't so confident, it would have been the wrong person. Because you attract the energy that you have. You attract what you believe in yourself. If you're constantly negative about yourself, if you're constantly just trying to make yourself believe you're you're just not worthy, you're always going to attract that. And don't get me wrong, there was like dates in between Jack. Mm. Obviously, when I wasn't with him, by the way. I mean, I was say. <laughs> you know, no, I mean like after the just guy that cheated on me, I had like I went through a, I went through a phase. I went through dating, and it's always the wrong guy. It was the wrong guy, and then. It was, I realized it's because I'm trying to find happiness in other people. Constantly trying to find happiness in other people. And then when I started focusing on myself, he came along. You know, a lot of women, when they're in the situation where they're lacking confidence or self-worth or they're feeling like something is missing, will, and this isn't just women, this is people. Men as well. Yeah, right? They'll think that the answer is a romantic solution, Yeah. right? Is it? No, it's not. Um, I've been there. I've done that. And obviously I'm speaking from personal experience. You could find someone that really helps you. You know, you could genuinely find someone who inspires you, motivates you, pushes you. And that's so remarkable. And if you do find that person, don't let them go, you know. But unfortunately, if you have so much self-hatred, you are never going to be satisfied in the relationship that you are in because you constantly have to find that person to give you that happiness. Mm. You're constantly waiting for that person to do something it's for like you. It's unstable, right? It's like it's unstable. Dependency. It is a lot of dependency, and um, I think that the most rela most important relationship you're ever going to have is going to be with yourself. Because when you go to bed at night and you're in your own little thoughts up here, right? That's you and you. That's you and you. So you got to fix that up here first before you go trying to find a, a, a person to share your life with, you know? And, you know, so we, you end up, you know, Jack ends up proposing. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you you build a business together, which is a, a topic in and of itself, which you're, you're still working together with him on now. Yeah. And then, it, <laughs> and then at some point you did both decide in a very, you know, and I've, I've listened to your story. So you decide in a very amicable mature way that this situation isn't making both of you right it, happy yeah and there was a sentence you said where you said um you and jack grew apart which i found quite curious and i find it curious because on this podcast we've we've been talking a lot about monogamy for whatever reason and this idea and in fact the last guest we had on dr aria who was you know who people have been really really blown away about um he he was cheated on by his partner you know and he found out in a really horrific way that she was pregnant with another man's yeah, baby yeah I, I listened to that okay and so on that sentence about growing apart this makes me ask you the same question about monogamy if it's possible for you to meet someone and grow apart you know especially you know because everybody's growing in some way um what are your thoughts on monogamy? Having been almost to the altar with someone, 
What are your thoughts on monogamy and... I... Can I be honest? I mean, <laughs> please. You I've, never have to ask permission again, to be honest. Here. I've never said this ever, and I'm a little bit nervous to say this, but I, when I was with Jack, I thought that that was my person. And I genuinely felt it in my heart, in my soul. I never questioned it once, right? And we grew apart. And that's because a lot of people don't know what was going on behind the scenes. Last year, when I launched Tone and Scott with Jack, we had a lawsuit against us. You know, no one really knew about that. Mm. You know, 50 grand in, law in lawsuits, trying to get our app that we, we built just to be ours and then build it from the ground up. That's why we had to refurbish and, and relaunch the programs because everything is now built homegrown in our offices with, your technology. with our technology, yeah. right? And do you know how much pressure that adds to a relationship? I can't imagine. And you're going home and you're like, what do you mean you didn't do this? What do you mean you didn't do that? Hating each other, resenting each other because you think they're to blame. He thinks you're to blame. I think he's to blame, right? And... It's going to take a very, very special person to fit into the shoes that Jack left. You know, he is such an incredible man in every aspect, works hard, is caring, is loving, is ambitious, is, is everything a woman would want in a man. Unfortunately, we grew apart. And it is unfortunate because I genuinely loved him and still do love him unconditionally i'd give him my kidney if he needed it and it would take someone very very special and confident to fill that space up and i'm not gonna hold my breath does that make sense i'm not gonna hold my breath i'm gonna you know let's just see where it goes you think it's possible um, I think it's possible. I think anything's possible. I just think that it's going to take someone with a hell of a lot of confidence and someone that understands that I don't need anything else but effort and time from them. Mm. I don't need your money. I don't need your gifts. I don't need. So you're saying you think that Jack's shoes will be difficult to fill. And it's almost like you're setting his shoes as the standard of what you're looking for in the future. So it kind of begs the question, well, you've got two feet that fit those shoes perfectly, Jack's. So why isn't he filling those shoes? I think if anyone turns around and says to you that I work with my partner and we run a company of 30 people and hundreds and thousands of, of subscribers and, you know, an, an ever growing company and we're so in love I, I really literally will look at them and be like, how did you make that happen? Working and being romantically involved with someone is difficult. Because let me tell you something, when you come home from work, you're coming home from work with the same person. What do you think you're going to speak about when you get home? Work. work. What do you think you're going to speak about um, after you have sex? The work <laughs> the work yeah i'm being honest like you you live and you breathe your company jack is an entrepreneur in himself jack is a co-founder jack built this with me right yeah so if i'm going through all those things as an entrepreneur as a co-founder he is as well i don't know if you're answering the question chrissy but i am answering the question it doesn't so work it doesn't work because you work together yes and it if doesn't you didn't work. work together it would have probably worked I absolutely don't regret ending it. I've learned more about myself in the year and a half of parting ways with Jack than I did in five years of being with him. Facts. I don't regret ending it. Would I feel some type of way if he, were, he was with someone else? You'd be absolutely lying to yourself if you said no. Come on, mate. Like, we, we buddy was about to get married. We own a company together. Of course you'd feel some type of way. But would I be jealous? No. Would I be happy if he was happy? Hell yeah, I would, because his happiness makes me happy. Is in the future a possibility of me being with him again? I don't, I don't know. How can, I, how can you possibly answer that question when the possibility of me parting ways with him five years ago was not even a vision? I can't answer that question, but if he was to find someone and be truly happy and in love and she was a good egg, I'd be happy.
And it's possible to be happy for someone, but also for it to suck at the same time. 100%. But that's only because you just feel some type of way, but deep down you just want them to be happy. I think he will find someone. I think he's going to find someone who's really genuine. Why are you smiling? I wasn't smiling. You're smiling. <laughs> no, I wasn't smiling. I yeah, think you, you are. I think you were smiling. I think you felt some type of way by saying that. No, I really do. I swear. I Bloody hell, I've been honest enough now, till now yeah, to like will. lie. But, he will. but you, if, when you, he does, mm. right? When he does, which he will, I just want one thing from that girl. If you're listening out there to so Jack's future wife, I just don't want her to sway he's a mind on our business. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, leave tone and sculpt. You don't need it anymore. That's horrible. Like, don't interfere. Don't need to get involved, love. All right? Oh, look at you. <laughs> but it's true. Like, I, I'm sorry, but when I'm with a guy, if he starts telling me what to do with my company, or if he starts telling to me, or it's me or Jack, I'd be like, yeah, I wouldn't want to get be a that. grip. Yeah. It's Jack. If you give me an ultimatum, I don't want to be with you. You know All what? This stuff. So I was, I was thinking about this earlier and I've got some friends. I wouldn't call them necessarily friends, but people that I know personally. And they would hate, because they're so insecure as men, they would hate the idea of dating someone as self-made and successful as you. Mm -hmm. And it's a certain type of insecure man. <laughs> I'm laughing because I already know. I've really, already been there. Really? Yeah. Yeah certain type of insecure man that really is seeking to control mm -hmm. that would, would not like a Chrissy because you can't be controlled. You can't be controlled through gifts, through X, no. Y, or Z. And you've been there. Yeah, I've been there. I've done that. <laughs> like, you know, I remember one time. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Sarah's like, yeah. Sarah's my PA. She's like, yeah, open up. <laughs> But I remember one time when I was speaking to this guy, you know, after Jack, and I was going to LA. This was one of the biggest photo shoots for Tone and Scott. This was, you know, to refurbish the entire app and everything, like brand new look, brand new everything. So much money went into this. I think nearly 90 grand in production. That's a lot of money. Shit ton of money. Shit ton of money. house with that. Yeah, I mean, I can put down two mortgages for that. Yeah. So as you can see, like, what, but when we do things, we do things right at mm -hmm. Tone and Sculpt and that's facts. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember he sat down, he was like, I don't know, I just feel a bit, you going? I was like, what do you mean? What do you think I'm going to do? Go and, <laughs> go and, you know, go crazy with other men in LA. I'm going to work. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Really insecure. And I found myself thinking it was me. I was like, wait a minute. And then I sat back and I was like, no, that's you. Mm. You're insecure. That's a you problem. That's not my problem. I went to LA, had the best time ever with my team. We had the most incredible time, you know, met the most incredible people, came back, most incredible campaign. And I felt good. But had I let that man sway me, mm. maybe I, I may have been a bit vulnerable at the time. And let's say he did sway me. What if I changed my mind and didn't go? That could have happened. Was he intimidated by you and your success, do you think? At the beginning, yeah, 100%. Let's be honest, I'm 20, oh my God, 26. <laughs> 26, I was still 24. <laughs> I'm 26 years old and... You are killing the game. I'll say it because I know you're too humble. No, I, no, 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 no. I said it, it's fine. You, didn't say you say whatever you want, but it's not even that. It's, you're, you know, when you're 26 years old and maybe you have a few things, um, people start to obviously feel a bit like, do you know what I think it was? People start to feel like they should have those things. Can I say things. something? When you talk about your success. I get awkward, don't I? You're super awkward and... <laughs> I'll, uh, can I just say a, an observation? And I think this is a, a society problem, not a you problem. Men aren't like that. No, they're not. Men love coming up on here and, and saying how much money they're making and how much they're killing it and how many X, Y, and Z they've achieved. Um, you don't seem to be as comfortable talking about your success. And I feel like that's a reflection of the society we live in. Uh, honestly, uh, it's not even that. It's really? me. I'm very awkward with stuff like that. Like, can I be honest? I don't even check my bank accounts. I let my accountant deal with it. I, I re, I don't, I, I think for me, I stay so tunnel vision in the vision. Mm. So 
I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is check my mentions and DMs and go on my community pages in that forum. That's literally the first thing I do. Mm. And if I start thinking about how am I going to make a billion? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? I don't know. It becomes a bit suffocating to the vision that you have. Mm. Um, and I was really number driven at the beginning, not financially, but on Instagram followers and followers likes. the more followers it means i'm amazing the more likes it means i'm fit enough to be here you know and i got so obsessed i used to almost like not think i was good enough unless i got a certain amount of likes or followers and i completely lost sight of why i'm doing what i'm doing you know now i don't even check the likes i get mm. i don't even check the the my statistics my team do i don't check it because i don't care what I care about is that comment that a lady saying to me, oh my God, this has helped me so much. This has made me so confident. That feeds my energy. If I start thinking, how am I going to get a hundred million? How am I going to just, that will come. I'm confident it will come, but it's not my fundamental, you know, And it's going to come by you focusing on something else. Yeah, right? I'm focused on something else. And it's not that society has made me feel uncomfortable to talk about my success. It's that I've, you can speak to any of my team. Like, I just don't care about it. Mm. Can I be honest with you? Like, I am not thriving to, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not thriving to have the, the biggest house or the fanciest car. I mean, I even said to you, like, I don't have a fancy car, a fancy house, by mm. the way. Mm. And you were like, I don't care. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I don't really care about stuff like that. I never, I never have been like that. And it's not that I'm trying to be humble. It's like, I literally don't give a shit. Mm. I don't care about a fancy car. Never have done. On the things that you do care about, you talked about these comments and these DMs you get. Um, I, I imagine, you know, cause I get a couple of DMs as well. <laughs> You get a lot, <laughs> not a couple, you get a lot. And uh, how how does it feel to have that sort of responsibility when someone messages you something so deeply personal and they're, they're seeking advice or guidance or they're just sharing a, a problem with you? How does that feel in terms of... Well, how it, does it make you feel? Um, when someone messages Because you don't want to say. Because... I'm not qualified to deal with certain situations, but at the same time, the contradiction with me is like, You're giving I just that want advice. to say something yeah. and I just want to acknowledge the person, mm -hmm. but I know I can't solve, and it would be almost irresponsible for me to try and solve their problem. 100%. If You're not there is, to fix someone's problems. Yeah. But, but I, I think the value that I can bring is just by like listening and acknowledging, but you know, there's a spectrum, right? So you have the, on one end, I love what you do. And the other end, you have people that are suicidal or that are, you know, and, um, it's, it, sometimes it's a lot. I, I had this one video go viral, 30 million views, and it was about depression. And I got 8,000 DMs that week from people on that spectrum. And I just didn't know what to do. I was like, cause when you read them, some people are really, really suffering. And, uh, they've come to me because clearly in some cases, one girl that said she'd barricaded herself in a room in Egypt and she was, um, on the verge of suicide. Like she didn't feel like she could speak to anyone else. And sometimes a stranger yeah. is the, the the most safe place to, you know, how does it feel for that, you? I don't know, it just kind of made me emotional. No, it did. Uh, I, I, the fact that I, that, to that I remembered that instantly, this girl barricaded in a room in Egypt who had watched this video and had reached out to me to for me to give her the answer she's looking for in her life, which I'm not qualified to give, right? All I can do is be a friend in that in that situation. Um, but, but I'm sure you get messages that are, you know. Yeah, I get um, messages every day thousands mm. and um so there's two things that i've started to do one of the biggest teams we have at tone and skulk is the customer support team right and by the way this isn't because we get influxes of emails it's because we have a person for each social facebook community manager instagram all of this stuff and the reason being is we don't need them it's because I want every single person to be heard. And what you just said there is exactly what I think as well. You want to be a friend. I call my community familia. I always use that word. I always say, you're my sisters, you're my familia. Because at the end of the day, I'm not here to fix your problems, but I'm here to listen to your problems. I'm here to be the friend that you may think you don't have in, in your reality. You can't fix someone's problems. You can't offer, you know, mental health advice because if you say something wrong, God forbid anything happened. Sure. 
but you can listen. You can make feel make someone feel like they're part of something. And that's the best thing I can do, you know? Yeah. And you know, I was, I was thinking then as well about the previous topic we had, and I, I rarely switch back, but before you came here today, there was mm. a question I actually wanted to ask you about oh, God, yourself. Yeah, okay. And I only ask questions <laughs> because I am curious myself. Sure. And I'm trying to find, I, I think the, the reason I ask these questions is because I'm trying to find similarities in some way sure. between a, you know, a person on your journey and a person on mine. The question is, are you hard to date? <laughs> Today was one of those days in my life where I'm filming this podcast with Chrissy. I've got a ton of things going on. I've got tons and tons of emails. I'm sprinting around. And like usual in my crazy, crazy world, I am neglecting my nutrition, something that I, I have done for probably the last decade. And this is why Huel sponsored this podcast and why I've been a Huel customer for about three years and why when I was looking for a partner to work with on this podcast, Huel was the company that came to mind. It's a company that helped me with my nutrition and for me to stay sort of nutritionally complete, as is Huel itself, despite the fact that I have a crazy, crazy, unpredictable, unfor unforgiving schedule. And... Um, I love it. And it's, it's such a pleasure to get to have a podcast and to have a partner in Huel and in Julian, who is the founder and CEO, where I can talk about it and the benefits it gives to me in such an authentic way. If you've not tried Huel and you are someone that frequently neglects your diet, whether it's through busyness, whether you forget to have meals because of whatever's going on in your life, I implore you just to try it, just to check it out. Um, they, and Huel comes in many different like shapes and sizes. There's the powder, they've got like the savory meals now, and they have the bottles. And for me, I've always loved the bottles. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a pleasure that Huel sponsor this podcast and support us in this mission. And they're the reason that we're going to be scaling this podcast up big time. I was just chatting to, um, chatting to some of the production crew that work with me and Jack and Dom. And I was saying that um, now we have a partner on the podcast we can really take this up a level. You've seen me take it up one level this season already. We're going to take it up even further. And th that's in terms of production, in terms of the guests, in terms of what we can invest into this into this um, piece of content. So thank you to Huel. Check it out. Try the chocolate flavor. Let me know what you think if you are a Huligan, right? And um, I appreciate you listening. Back to the podcast. The question is, are you hard to date? <laughs> um oh shit yeah I think so I think I am I'm not gonna lie like okay so here's the thing right I'm super loving when I'm with you I'll do anything for you like I'll look after you I'll make you feel special comes the it's gonna be like but if you fucking grow <laughs> but no 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 like honestly like even <sighs> I can honestly say like even Sarah my PA will tell you like I fall hard in love when really? I yeah I head over heels for someone I'll fall so hard for you um but I also fall so hard out of love for you oh shit that's the issue with me and that's facts and I hate that about myself so much it's the one thing I hate the most about myself I'm a switch you do something to annoy me or you do something to kind of like, <laughs> it's bad. It's not healthy. Like I, people think I'm superwoman. I've got my own problems, sis. Like <laughs> I've got my own issues. I fall so in love with someone. And then if I don't see that same level of love back, I'm like, fuck this shit. Self-defense? Yeah. I do think in relationships, I'm really, I'm really defensive. And you know what? I can't believe I'm admitting all this, but yeah, I, I would say I am. And I think that, um, what are you defending yourself from? I don't know. Okay. Why are you, are, are you hard to date? Yeah. Okay. So, so are you defensive? Chrissy, this is all about your diary. Well, come to me. <laughs> no. I want to know what you're defending yourself from. Cause you, you literally said, if I don't get the same type of love back, <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So, so you're obviously very motivated. You're very inspired. You're very like driven, mm. right? Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm the same. Like, I just want to keep going. I want to grind. I want to grind. So if I see someone kind of just not doing the same, it infuriates me. Like, I'm almost like, how can you not have passion for something? How can you not have a drive for something? And then it leads me to believe that 
hold on a minute, if I did have the same person that had the same level of drive, would we be compatible? Maybe I do need someone a little bit more like low key because then it will make me feel a bit calmer when I'm home. It's all over the gaff. I don't know what I want. Women don't know what they want. Stop asking women what we want. We don't know what we want. (laughs) We don't know what we want. But what I can say is, I think sometimes when we overthink things, especially me, I overthink relationships all the freaking time. I think sometimes it's a good idea to just take a step back and just relax a bit. Because if someone is genuinely there for you, willing to listen, willing to take care of you and willing to always, always put effort in, Mm. stop being a bitch pretty much. You know, Mm. I, I, me personally, I'm, I'm difficult to date. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I don't even feel bad saying that. I feel quite free saying that. Like I'm a, I'm difficult <laughs> no today. Said, no one said you should feel bad. <laughs> no, I, I am. And I, I feel bad for the guy, but. Ugh. So I really want to dig into that because I can really, really relate. And that's why I started laughing because I've gone over the same predicament in my head thinking, maybe I need someone that's super ambitious and has loads of passions and is a philanthropist and da, da, da. And then I thought, but then maybe they'll drive me crazy because we're all, you know, and then, so I flip flop. And usually when I'm with one, I think I want the other. Same. And then, yeah. And then when I'm with that, I'm like, nope. (laughs) Same. Yeah. That's literally me. Yeah. I'll like. Maybe we can figure this out today. (laughs) I I honestly can't. And I think, do you know what it is? I think it's because we are people that are constantly switched on. Yeah. Like neurotic, obsessive. Obsessive, like with work, with this, with that. I'm not obsessive in a relationship. Like if someone tried to tell me what to do with my life, I'd be like, no way. And I couldn't imagine ever trying to tell someone what to do with their life. Like if you want to do whatever you do, whatever you want to do, that's your life. You live it the way you want to live it. Um, so because I'm obsessive with my life and my career, I'm constantly switched on. Mm. So if someone around me isn't, I almost feel like, I don't know. Do you know what? They're a bum. Oh my God. Don't. I think that's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true. Yes, I know. It's so true. And then do you find yourself feeling a bit lazy? Yeah. But also I, I'm like, Steve, don't tell him because you're passing your own worldview and your own values onto someone else. Who doesn't should, want it. Yeah. And you shouldn't be trying to change people out here. You accept them. Oh my you- God. That is me. <laughs> I'm literally like, what do you mean you don't want to be ambitious in life? What do you mean you don't have a passion? What do you mean? And I go crazy in my sure. head. And this is happening in my head whilst I'm looking at the meat. Do you know what I mean? I like, eat. Like, <laughs> let's, let's say I'm like, let's say we're at, we're at dinner. I, I'm having a full on blown conversation in my head. Like, what do you mean you're not ambitious? What do you mean you don't want this? And he's just chilling, you know, not doing anything wrong. And then I have to literally take a breather and be like, what am I doing? I can't. I can't push that onto someone. Mm. I can only push that onto myself. I need to chill out. Connected to this, maybe, maybe not. Your parents, mm. hardworking? Oh my God, so hardworking. Um, came from another country. Came from another country. Um, immigrated at the back of a lorry. Mm. You know, I immigrated at the back of a banana lorry. Wow. Yeah. And um, I remember we landed in France and my family got arrested because we were immigrants and they separated us. So they put me and my mum and my brother in one room, my dad in another room. And you could see him through the glass. And I remember crying and crying and crying like, dad, dad, dad. I didn't know what was going on. I was four years old. But I still remember that. I'll never forget the, the prison room was turquoise. I'll never forget that. And uh, when we came to this country, my mum and dad worked hard. My mum worked three jobs. My dad worked as a HV1 lorry driver every single night. You know, every penny they had, they saved, they saved, they saved. Um, My dad had a pretty bad gambling problem. I'm going to be honest. My mum was constantly trying to like fix that problem. And I've never actually mentioned that ever before, ever. And as much as I love my dad with my entire heart and and I want nothing more but him to be happy, it caused a lot of strain on my mum, like trying to feed her family, trying to like work hard, trying to save, trying to take us on holiday, you know? Um, So to save money and then to have the person you love gambling away, it's like, what's the point? Like, I don't understand 
why I'm with this person. But in my culture, you don't leave the man you're with. Mm. You're stuck with them. But my mum, even though he was like that, my mum loved and loves my dad so much. It's pretty bizarre because that would be enough to tick anyone off. But she just believed in him. He doesn't do it anymore. Believed in him and nourished him and loved him so much. And together they grew better. Um, so for me, if I have a man and he like places a bet on something, it triggers me to think he's going to be gambling. Mm. And I'm like, oh my God, no, sorry, out. He's put one bet down and I think he's a gambler. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's crazy. So I asked that question for a reason. Go on. Um, because we've, we've, we've established that we have very much similar traits and relationships mm. that we, we tend to really value hard work and ambition. And it tends to be the case that the value we attribute to hard work and ambition probably comes from a childhood where um, hard work and ambition were the thing that might have got us out of some bullshit. Let me tell you from my example, all right? So very much the same as yours, but switch the parents. So I came from Africa. I was born in Africa, came to the UK. My dad had like a pretty good job, but my mum, you could all call it a gambling addiction. She had this she has both a gambling addiction on one hand because she played there, there was probably a thousand lottery tickets if i opened any drawer in our house lottery wow, tickets right okay. but on the other hand she she was she was she couldn't stop starting businesses to the point that <gasps> okay. the reason why we were so poor we never had birthdays or christmases or went on holiday at all ever period was because my mum spent all the money trying to become a millionaire by starting these businesses they'd all fail within six months because you can't read or write and my dad was the unconditionally loving calm supportive won't leave you even though you're an absolute asshole parent right so it's one yeah so in my house i think when i think about why i am the way i am now i think money was such a big problem that in our house it was the cause of so much pain Mm -hmm. same that i grew up valuing it so much and the thing that would get you it, which would, to me would be like, you know, my, what I thought was happiness was like hard work, ambition. Hard, Same. Like my parents worked so hard that they wouldn't even be the, in the house when I went to bed or when I woke up. And so I value hard work and ambition because my parents taught me it because it was the cure to our problems. Right. So, and especially as immigrants, right. There's a different, there's like an immigrant vibe. I, which, I get you. Yeah. I get you. Don't, we don't even have to talk about it. I just get yeah. you. So like, this is part of the reason why I think in relationships, when someone doesn't have those values, when they don't value hard work and ambition, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. yeah, but yeah. it's probably something wrong with me. I don't think there's anything wrong with you. I think I, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and think there's something wrong with me. Not wrong. It's like, it's the result of my trauma my um, traumatic childhood experience maybe i wouldn't change it for the world <laughs> do you know what it is i What's swear that? to god i think it's it's the fact that okay so a lot of people when we moved to england i was never allowed to like go to, to stay over other friends houses my dad is super strict like i couldn't even wear skirts around him absolutely not forbidden and so when i did used to go to my other friends houses like english culture it was a completely different vibe like their family was different like their mums and dads were different and then when i'd come to my house it was different and i didn't understand it so my dad has always wanted me to marry an albanian man it's like his dream he's like please marry an albanian man you two two will be amazing together like this and i'm like dad i don't care what he is so long as i'm in love And it happens to be that the guys I've been with have been English Mm. and the cultures are completely different. And it, it, I don't understand. Like sometimes when they do things, I don't understand. Give me examples. Like, okay. So in my household, Mediterranean, loud, proud, like very, um, like, uh, loud, really? yeah, super loud. I'm, I am super loud. I love it. But you know, you come to my house and my mum will have dinner ready for you. And my mum will buy you slippers to make you feel like home, you know, and she'll, she'll welcome you, hug you, kiss you on each cheek. But then when I'd go to Jack's families, for example, as much as they were so loving, so caring, it just wasn't the same. Like you'd have yeah. dinner at din- different times or, and I didn't understand it because I've been brought up in a family where everything's together, like mm. togetherness. 
Mm. And everyone's got each other's backs and everyone's solid. So to have a different culture thrown into the mix, sometimes it does clash. Yeah. And it does, like cultures are different, but that doesn't mean one culture is better. Mm. It just means it's different. So it's up to you whether you want to learn both cultures and, and meet in the middle. It would be easier if I went for an Albanian guy because their culture culture is the same. And I've been brought up in that culture. But obviously Jack's culture is completely different. Mm. So I've had to kind of like, you know, yeah. find the middle, find that that middle ground, I guess. I don't know what you call it, but find that balance. Are you scared <clears throat> that you might not ever meet the right person? All the time. I'm all the time scared. I'm 26 years old. And as women, we're told we have a time frame. If you're not 30, you have kids, you're too old. If you, if you have kids at 40, what kind of mum are you? All this bloody shit around us all the time. Do you know how much pressure that adds as a woman? All the time. So much pressure. Like you've got to get married. You've got to have kids. You've got to be a mum. You've got to be a mum before 30. Oh, I just want to like breathe out. There's so much pressure. And it petrifies me honestly petrifies me because a lot of people around me in my industry are married or or have children or have like a fiance and I had that and I almost think to myself I had that and I let that go and do sometimes you 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 think do you know and this is probably I'm asking this question again for my own reasons so you, do you ever consider the fact that you might be too busy being entrepreneur no. Chrissy no you're never too busy for someone you love. I don't think that's the case. I don't think um, I'm too busy. Do you think you're, what you're doing with, with your businesses and as an entrepreneur might prevent you um, being uh, aware and forming a healthy relationship when the prospect arises? Do you know what I think it is? When you have a nine to five, you clock out. You come home, you switch off. You don't clock out. You're working constantly. Even if you're in this room, you're still at the back of your head thinking about your business. You're thinking about something you need to do, something you need to check off, something you need to approve, something you need to expand on. So it's it's so guilty for me to say this. Like I feel bad saying it, but I could be in a room with you and I'm thinking about my companies constantly. And someone who has a nine to five doesn't understand that because it's like you're switched off at five and sometimes I feel bad saying I do kind of wish I can switch off at 5 p.m but I just can't and I think it's not necessarily like I'm too busy it's that I'm constantly thinking even if I'm in the room with you I'm constantly thinking about what I have to do you can make someone feel pretty lonely just by being even if you're sat next to them yeah you're often you know yeah I, I often say I say like when I'm with somebody my aim isn't for them to ever understand me it's just to understand that they don't understand yeah because true. I think I'm like too difficult to understand. If I'm quiet for an hour, it doesn't mean I don't love you. It means that I've just got an email. So true. And it's just fucked me. And I actually don't want to always share things at home because it's You're offloading. Yeah, you're offloading. And I don't want to be that, because I could offload 24 seven. Oh, trust me, you know? so can I. <laughs> Sarah's always like, oh, <laughs> here we go again. Um, but it's true. Like, you know, your phone is buzzing off constantly. You could get a DM by someone. You could... You could get a message, an email, and it's like, oh, fuck, really? And then you're just sitting watching a movie with your partner. Tell me about that part of being an entrepreneur. I think that's why I really started the podcast in the first place, was I want to hear about the bullshit of running a business, the unexpected, unpredictable, life-shifting bullshit that happens. Yeah, your life is you breathe and you live your businesses. I think this is something people don't understand. You live and you breathe your companies. They are your babies. No one and nothing can get in the way. And no one understands that. They see the money, the success, the followers, the this, the that, the blingy cars, whatever the hell you want to see. And let me tell you the reality. You don't have much time. You suck at relationships you don't have many friends and the friends that you have, you don't really see them. Um, when you do have time to yourself, you never switch off ever. You are the biggest self-critic ever. 
you constantly think that you could be doing better and that pressure is insane mentally and physically it drains you and um another thing is that i really just want to say um if you think a life of an entrepreneur is so glamorous this is the first time i've put on jeans in i would say i feel blessed i feel privileged i don't know how long but i don't live in jeans i live in sweats and sliders so if it sucks so much it doesn't suck and you know what i'm trying to say yeah i know exactly what you're saying but i'm also here to to try and help people understand multiple perspectives because people say okay so you've criticized you know you've talked not criticized but you've talked about the downsides right and why do you still do it because you could just say do you know what i killed it hang up your uh your gym your your active wear clothes <laughs> or your shoes i don't know what, what people would say <laughs> and you could say that's it i'm done why don't you oh no why not gosh the feeling i get when i when I see someone's transformation, nah, that fills me up. Like that fuels me. When I see a transformation, when I see someone who had um, a mental a mental health disorder or an eating disorder and has is now thriving, do you know that is so unexplainable that nothing else matters? I'd rather not have a relationship, to be frank with you. I really am not that fussed. So long as I can continue to help as many women as possible, for me, that's enough. And that's why I don't stop. Is there an end point in all this? I Is hope there... not. Okay. There's no, like, mountaintop, there's no... No, I, I think that... You know, you're you're told in life that you need to go to school, you need to go to university, you need to achieve this, right? So then you achieve this and you are not satisfied. So you need to achieve this and then this and then this. I don't have goals for financial status, for awards, for anything like that. I had maybe two goals and I've achieved one of them which I won't share because it's actually very top secret, but you'll see uh, it next year. Okay. <clears throat> um, but if you have these um, tangible goals. I'm thinking now what it is. I'm like, you finally married an Albanian man. I'm like, what, what's oh, going on? Oh, yes, daddy, I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't, I didn't. No, I'm not married. <sighs> nope, that's actually very depressing. Thank you. Um, but no, it's like it, you, 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 goals are like you you know when you wrote in your diary i want a range rover mm -hmm. right you got a range rover what then just total anti-climax yeah well oh, i want a million dollar house cool what then you're lonely in your house yeah your house is so big you don't even know what to do with it mm. by the way my house is not so big i don't know what to do with it i need more space <laughs> but do you see what i'm saying so i don't have those types of goals because they're not attainable is there a point when you're building the businesses you run where you had your worst ever day because I can think about the worst <sighs> days that I've had in business. What was the <laughs> what was the one that sprung to mind straight away? Oh God. Um, okay, so when I'm a, I'm a woman in tech, right? Sure. So with an app, there's complications that you are not even prepared for. There's maybe a bug, maybe this, maybe that. So obviously, when this lawsuit was happening to get my app back um, from the developers from the old developers it was a third party company yep. um when we transferred it to brand new servers that are obviously you yes. know pretty much ours um because servers are just so huge mm -hmm. but um i didn't know anything about tech when i started now you speak to me tech i know tech language okay so it's actually <laughs> i'm very proud because okay. for someone who literally didn't understand what the hell a server was i was like what's first that time you heard was? there's a bug did you think oh lady bird <laughs> oh, i honestly don't like it's embarrassing but when the transition happened the whole app went right shut down and imagine when you know when instagram shuts down people are like oh my god instagram sucks like f you instagram mm -hmm. okay but this is my company now. So when it shuts down, it's like, I can't, I can't, I can't pay for my employees. I can't pay for my office. I can't do this. I can't do that. When it shut down, my whole face shut down with it. I was like, shit, what do I do now? This is it. We lost 10,000 subscribers in one day. Fuck. 
you times 10,000 by 13.99. Yeah, it's a lot of fucking money. It's a lot of money in one day, gone. Gone. That was probably the wor- one of the worst days. And I just sat back and I looked at Jack and I just said to him, what the fuck do we do now? Jack being Jack, he was like, don't worry. We'll gain them back on. Don't worry. Why are you stressing? This is what happens. Like, what do you mean? Why are we stressing? Idiot. <laughs> 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 what do you mean? He's like, chill out. But um, yeah, that was probably the worst day. And I just remember I, I lost so much weight. Right. I lost, I would say I was 56 kilograms. I went down to 49 in like 56 kilograms. Yeah. I went down to 49. Seven kilograms. Yeah, but I went down to 49. So can you imagine? In what space of time? Um, Three weeks to four weeks. I couldn't keep anything on. I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. I lost everything. Then me and Jack parted. So. And I was still producing videos, still producing content, still. How long was the app down for? It was down for three days. Wow. Three days. And I was still producing content going on Instagram. Don't worry, guys. Like, we'll still get out there. I wasn't eating, wasn't sleeping, wasn't doing anything. I'd just broken up the person I was going to marry. I was in a house with my dog, the house that I built with the man I was supposed to be with. (laughs) I didn't know what the hell I was doing anymore. At that point, I thought I thought I should give up. Not gonna lie, really? but yeah, I was like, "This is it now." No, no, I'm giving up. I've got my law degree. I'm gonna go back to doing that. This is just too much stress. And then I did, and I just kept going. Just kept going. Something inside me was like, "You just have to keep going. Please don't give up. Please don't give up, Chrissy." You talked about um, your own battles with mental health um, over the years. I think I think I read that you you said you'd suffered with depression at, at various stages. Yeah. Early on. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, huge. Like, I mean, a lot of people see a very picture perfect image on Instagram, which I'm to blame. Just like everybody else, you wanna you wanna showcase the best bits of you. Nothing wrong with that. You keep doing you. If that works, you keep doing you. But I have been in such dark places that I couldn't I couldn't picture wanting anyone to to feel what I felt in those places even someone I resent not that I resent anyone but I wouldn't even want that for them these dark places suck you in so much that you honestly start to contemplate whether you just want to stop feeling that feeling period like just be done with it and I'll never forget I was laying in bed one day and I was so depressed so depressed that I just thought to myself it'd be so much easier if I wasn't here it's so much easier just quit just leave and I cried myself to sleep and I woke up the next morning and it almost felt like in my dream I'd made it happen if you know what I'm trying to say without saying it and I just thought I need to stop because I cannot go on like this. And I think when I try and explain to people that I've, I know those dark places, I've been in those dark places, they don't believe me because they see me for the person I am today. They don't see the person that fought so hard to be where I am today, mentally. Not even about the success, the businesses, mentally. That's the most important thing up here. This is the most important thing. You can have all the money in the world, all the businesses in the world. You can have 300 employees, multiple companies. Who gives a fuck about that if you up here are so not okay? So yeah, I've been through dark places, but I've also picked myself up multiple times and I've had to brush my shoulders off and get shit done. And that's why I keep saying to every single person out there, you have to do this for you. Do this for you this is the the biggest and most important thing i can say to you and now that you have you know you've built this empire this little fitness empire which is rapidly growing do you ever find yourself in those dark places even today yeah not as bad um but i find myself um i find myself wondering if i'll ever have like a somewhat normal life So like, 
what we discussed will I ever find someone again will I be in love will I get married will I have children like I want children I want to be married I believe in those things I want those things but sometimes I wonder if those things are going to happen for me and I do wonder I just maybe need to stop overcomplicating things in my mind but I can't switch off and maybe the only way I know to switch off is just to quit you see what I'm saying Mm -hmm. it's a vicious circle but then if I quit, I'll be so angry at myself for quitting. Mm. So it's like ongoing, it's constant, it doesn't stop. So, um, And do you think yeah. part of the, that fear comes from the fact that you believe the way you are now and how you live and work now and how obsessive you are now is probably not like conducive or um, it's probably not going to allow that other, all those other things you want to, yeah. to come true, right? So like you think, well, something's going to have to give at some point. Is that? I, I do. I'm not going to lie. I, I I literally think like that. I'm not going to lie. Like, so when, when Tonoscope was built, um, we, I didn't, I honestly didn't realize it would grow th- the speed it did with little to absolutely no marketing expenditure. So everything's been hyper organic in the space of 12 months. We now have a team of 22 people when it was just me and Jack 12 months ago, 22 people, an office in, in, in London. We know what the rent is like in London. It's off the chain. Um, 120% growth, you know, month by month, it's rapid growth. We've just launched a brand new trainer, um, who is like, insane and um i keep saying to myself okay when i get to this point i can i can relax and i say that to sarah all the time i keep saying i keep mentioning sarah but but because she is the one person that knows me probably better than my own blood because she's with me everywhere i go and she is the person i speak to about a lot of things so i always say to her okay when i get to this point with tone and scope i can breathe Mm -hmm. and bless her she's like yeah yeah but she knows in, in her head, I want more and I want more. But it's not that I want more, it's that I believe we can do more and I believe we can do more and, and strive for more. So when does it end? When does it end? It doesn't end. That's what I'm trying to say. So you have to make peace with it. You have to make peace with the fact that it's not supposed to end. But you also have to make peace with the fact that you need to make maybe some self self-adjustments and and be a bit critical with yourself because if you're going in a relationship and constantly thinking that that person should be on your level that's that's my problem I need to deal with that's not their problem you know it's not fair on them how do you deal with that I think it I think it takes time I think you're not sure are you no I'm not sure I can tell by your body language oh god you haven't figured that one out. It's okay to not have it figured out, right? I don't have it figured out. And I'm someone who doesn't like not having things figured out. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, but I do think I need to stop being so mean. It's this balance, <laughs> right? Between trying to figure it out now, because you kind of want to be able to have a plan and have, you know, but then also realizing that you shouldn't overthink this thing. And that you should maybe just... You've literally uh, made me feel in this podcast like I'm the most impossible person to be with. I've not. I'm just asking the questions. Oh, no, <laughs> no. I, but I can't lie. I'm not going to lie just to make myself sound good. No, it's, it's, uh, it's a very important part of being a successful person. That it has this crazy neurotic obsessive brain. Yeah, I do. And that's super ambitious. And that's, but also has these other things they want. And life is a drop at you. You can't have everything at the same time. So what we're talking about now is like compromise and how you reach that compromise in your life, if possible. I'm yeah. in the same place. I have no idea how that's going to happen. But do you do you want kids? I do want kids. Do you yeah. want to get married? Um, I'm not so concerned about the concept of marriage, but I want to have a long term partner because I want to have kids, and so I'm willing to commit long term. If it's a marriage, if it's signing some other piece of paper, if there's no paper, I like sure. don't really care too much about the whole marriage thing. If if it matters so much to to, to the partner, I'll do it. But I don't. I was saying on the last podcast. No, I see what you mean. I don't have a great case for why the law or or a religion should be involved in love. I don't think it has a great track record with love. Yeah. So I'm like, I think that's an idea which we all as a society need to just reconsider. Yeah, I see think, what you mean. Like, I'm gonna. My closing statement on this point is, <laughs> we are all so different. You are different from me, only a little bit. But then, like, you're different from your assistant, and I'm different from mine, and more, my friends from school. Sure. So, logically you would think the answer to how we form our romantic connections would also be unique and different. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think at any time in life where the script tells you everyone has to go through this door 
when you are a different shape. It's like putting a, a triangle in a square. Like, of course. I think that's when you have to question things. So I got kicked out of school because I just stopped going, dropped out of university after one lecture. And I've tried to navigate my, life, my way through life, just rejecting the things that I'm meant to just accept blindly. And marriage is one of them where I'm like, can I achieve all the things I want to in a relationship? Without that without piece marriage? of paper. Yeah. And I put it on my LinkedIn last week. I said, um, I basically said to the world, I think marriage is a concept we need to reconsider for sure. everyone. S someone proved me wrong. And one guy commented, he said, I've been in a, a marriage for 45 years. We love each other. We've done this. I said, could you have done that without the marriage? He went, yes. Okay then. Yeah. So why But you would do it if she or, I don't know, he, whatever. Maybe. <laughs> but then I need to be it honest was, here because you know if they really wanted to get married I'd, I'd ask them why they really wanted to get married I'm not gonna lie I am the same like for me a piece of paper doesn't define my love for you okay let's talk about this then so why do you why do you want to get married do you know what it is like this is me being a woman right. I just really want to dress <laughs> we can do the wedding like that's marriage is different from a wedding and a ceremony but, someone said that on my post I yeah went, I guess so when you party. put it I yeah, I mean, look, my my dream wedding would gen genuinely be like on the beach, having like burgers and beers with the closest friends and families, running in the ocean. I don't want it, like a big fancy party. I feel like you just described your dream day. <gasps> yeah, literally. You know what I mean? If you could do that like this week. But if <laughs> I said to you, because you're so busy, if I said to you, what's what do you want to do right now? I bet any money you'd say, do you know what? I'd love to be on the sofa and just eat my favorite food with the people I love. Yeah, of course. Right? Of course, yeah. Over going out, getting smashed. Of course. That's what I'm saying, but a lot of people- The funny thing is my brain actually is like, go on your laptop and check your emails. <laughs> uh, see, that's what I mean, because you're obsessed. Yeah, I was like, because I love it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but what I'm saying is to other people, they want a big wedding, a mm -hmm. big, big fuss. I hate fuss. I absolutely hate fuss over me. And it's so funny because like even my team surprise, threw me a surprise birthday party. I saw I was so awkward. I was like, don't ever do that again. I, <laughs> I hate all eyes on me. Yes. Yeah, Although my business is built on all eyes on me. Do you see how that's so contradicting? I, it's the same. I used to, my previous assistant, um, who ended up being my girlfriend, long fucking story, which we're not going to go into. Whoa! Uh, I spilling the tea. Sophie, I don't actually know if Sophie, so my current assistant, Sophie, has been with me for four years. I don't know if she knows this, but- Sophie! do you know this do i do you have i ever said to you when it's my birthday or when it's like social chains anniversary to not make a fuss about it yeah. and the reason why i say this is because i get so much attention as it is and so much fuss for like being the founder being the ceo the, the eyes are always on me I'm you on just don't want it you're like, like no 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 yeah no. <laughs> same right not... i'm the same and i always just feel like oh i don't know so that's why my dream wedding day if that day will come is to just Oh my God, 20, 30 people max, mm. closest friends and families, my, my dog there. And just to have the person I love. And I always say, I want to be in a room full of people and look at the person I love and just me and him understand each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That feeling where you look at them and you're just like, I get you. <laughs> I get you. And that's, that's what I crave. That's what I want. And you're right, a piece of pa paper doesn't define that feeling. Only you define that feeling in that person. So I don't need a piece of paper. You're right. Um, I guess I just want the concept. Mm. Oh, yeah. Are you scared of death? Who, me? No, not at all. <laughs> Who, me? Who do you think I'm talking to? <laughs> <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Are you? No, I'm not. No. I'm not. Like, um... I'm scared of not living. Yes, I'm scared of like, I really want to do things. I want mm. to explore. I want to do things. I want to, you know, my my dream vacation mm. would be to not have my phone there. I don't care about a selfie. I don't care about this. I just want to be present in the moment. And if I, if I told you that you were going to die a, a week from now, what would you regret? Oh, what would, so much. What would you regret? So much. Tell me. Not living, just working. There you go. Not living. Like, as much as I love doing what I, what I do, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I've built what I've built, telling people to look after themselves and I forget to look after myself. And that's why when I do train and when I exercise, it's the only time I do feel like I'm doing something really special for myself. And I've like, I do a lot of skipping 
You're right? amazing at skipping, by the oh, fucking way. I watched you the other day. I was like, oh my God. Did you? Like, I thought I was a good skipper. No, And then I saw you like dancing <laughs> while skipping. And then I was like, oh, she's like, of course. She's doing like a double crossover. And I, I just I had to, I started to feel really inadequate and insecure as a man. It was it's like, fine. So I just had it to It happens all the time. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. But you know why I skip? Why is that? Uh, you have to be fucking present. Because hmm. if you're not present, you get whipped. <laughs> right? And... When I'm skipping, I literally feel like I can't think about anything else but the rhythm. And for someone who's always on, switched on, someone who's always doing things, you know, people always tell me, go go meditate, do yoga. Can I fuck? Like that, yeah. Can I fuck? I'm like, <laughs> I literally go to meditate and I'm thinking about my, my to-do list. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I'm skipping, I'm so engrossed in it yeah. that yeah. I'm literally so present in the moment and it makes me feel alive. Mm. Same thing with training. I'm so engrossed in training. And that's why so many women, when I say to them, just train. You're a mum. You got to think about your children. You're, you're a student. You got to think about your studies. You're trying to, trying to make money because you don't know when you're going to pay your, your rent. Just train. It's the one moment that you can ignore the entire world and do something for yourself. So I really want to loop back around to this point about if you were to die <laughs> next week, Oh, you were trying to avoid it, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I was because you know the answer. Yeah, but I want to hear the answer because I'm asking this. I would feel the same way, right? Maybe feel awkward. My palms make, are sweating. It makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable, right? It does because I love my job so much. Like I love what I do. It, it, I thrive off it. But on the flip side. I do wish I was su- I was stop being such an annoying little bitch and just take some time off for myself, you know? Like, stop being so annoying to yourself, Chrissy. Just take some time off. It's okay. It's okay to go do things you love doing. Like traveling. Obviously, right now it's pandemic, but you know what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Like travel. Like maybe take a week off and just breathe. Um, but I, I can't. I can't. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't. Are you the same? I'm the same. Is there something, again, I'm just exploring this. Is there something strange about that where you feel like, you know, you're saying, you're saying, I can't. It's like you don't have a choice. But at the same time, you're telling me that if you were to die next week, you would regret not living. Yeah. Oh my God. This is such a heavy loaded question. Um, I feel like, I feel like this is the therapy session I needed. (laughs) (laughs) But it's, it's so true what you've just said. You've literally just you've shut me up. You've shut me up Amazing. because I can't. You're like, thank <laughs> fuck. Thank fuck I've shut her up. But it's true. Like I can't stop working because something keeps telling me I can't stop right now. Not yet. But on the flip side, if I was to die next week, I'd regret not taking some time off for myself to do the things that I love doing. I love going to museums. No one knows that. I lo- I literally love looking at things but you think that's a waste of time i do right now right now yeah and time is every entrepreneur's Mm. biggest asset time is everything how could it possibly be a waste of time if it's the thing you would regret The, the, the the reason why i think this death question is so revealing is they, they do all of these, there's a, a, a lady called Bonnie Ware who was, um, she worked with, um, I think it's called palliative patients, which are people that are about to die. Mm-hmm. They've gone home to die. And she asked them the question, what are your biggest regrets? And she wrote it down and she was doing this for years and she wrote a blog about it. And there's a certain sort of retrospective clarity you'll get in that moment when there is nothing going forward for your life about how you should have made your decisions in that moment you can imagine only the things that matter Mm -hmm. people what that girl said about your hair none of this shit will fucking matter the playground shit none of it will matter you'll just be left with the things that truly mattered and so putting yourself in that mindset i call it like deathbed thinking allows you to look at how you're living your life now and see if it's in accordance with the things that Mm. will matter in that like final moment and so I asked this question because I think the same about me. I'm like, if you told me today I had four days left to live, I'd be like, why didn't I have a better relationship with my family? Yeah. Why didn't I go see my niece? I don't have a relationship with my brother. Well, yeah. You know? Mm. I have a shit relationship with my my mum in particular. Yeah. 
I don't see my niece and my, my two nieces enough, but I've probably seen them, I don't know, three or four times. She's maybe three years old. She's only two hours away. And so I think these things about myself and I think, okay, so, but what are you sacrificing? But have you made a change? Because no one's I, ever I asked me to. that. See, the question is now, you've asked yourself that. I think it will always be there, but, <laughs> but it won't be. But no one's ever asked me that. So now you've got me thinking, oh shit, I need to get Sarah to put me on holiday because fuck me, I need to live my life. But it's like, in all honesty, I'll probably leave today and keep doing what I'm doing day in, day out. Until at some point you'll learn this lesson the hard way. Facts. And you know, um, recently one of the most important people of my life passed away. Mm. The woman that gave me a home, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, yeah, you best, know, but you know, yeah. my best, my best friend, Holly, who is literally my sister, her mom gave me a home when I was homeless. And, you know, she didn't once mention the months she left, let me live there, the food I ate, the hot water I used, not once ever brought it up. And I saw her on her dying bed. Right. And I held her hand and I just kept thinking to myself, nothing matters at this point. And do you know what Holly said to me? She goes, I would have called you sooner, but I was scared you were doing something. Hmm. And at that point I, I, it hit me. Like I looked down, I went, never say that again. You call me when you need me. I'm always there for you. But it's the fact that we've, the people around us know how busy we are, that they sometimes feel like, oh, maybe I just shouldn't. Hmm. The most important people, even my mum doesn't now. She goes, I didn't call you, babe, it's okay. I know how busy you are. And I say to her, no, you call me when you want me and you need me. And it's not that you've told people not to call you, right? Hmm. It's that they think that you're just so busy that it will be a disruption. Because hmm. you've made them feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm to blame a hundred percent. And you know, you have to take a step back and you have to realize what matters in life. And that for me, that moment there, I just realized to myself and I, I messaged every single person I loved the most. And I said, I don't care how busy I am. I'm always here for you. Always. So that's a real personal moment for your best friend. And I'm, I imagine you said earlier that you don't have many friends. Um, I have acquaintances, but like m close friends, you know, like friends. No, I don't think, I don't think a lot of people do though. If you really like yeah, ask them. I don't have many friends. Yeah. Like I have people that are there like acquaintances and I have people that I would genuinely die for. Those are my friends, you know, and I can count them on my hand. Holly other, is one of them. Other people have more friends. Is that a fair statement? Typically. Yeah, sure. But I don't really care if you have more friends than me, to be honest. I'm happy with the people I have. Mm -hmm. Because you have more friends with me doesn't make you more superior or makes you a better person because you have more mm -hmm. people around you. It's just, you know, I'm only 26. I don't know how many friends I'm going to have at 62. Mm -hmm. So I have friends. Do you see what I'm saying? Probably less. Maybe. Yeah, according to the days so you'd Maybe. have less, yeah. But at the same time, I couldn't have asked for better friends that I have now. And the friends I have now would protect me and look after me. And they know I would do anything for them. That's what matters. Not having a hundred friends. I want one good friend, not a hundred random friends. So I, I asked that question because I think I've definitely struggled to make and to hold on to friendships because of the way I've been over the last decade. In the same way, relation, like normal relationships, I found that I don't invest enough in my friendships as much as I probably should. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest. Um, people come and go, right? People come and go. And it's so bizarre because I know it sounds crazy, but I've pretty much built a virtual community, right? Mm. And I feel like that's my team. Even though I may have not met these women physically, I feel like they get me more than the people in my own life. Is that weird? Do you think that's weird? You think it's a bit weird, don't you? Be honest. I don't know if it's... Like it, I speak it's to unusual. people. It's, it's a, a very curious thing you've, you've just said, yeah. Like... You should, I don't know if you've ever seen, or maybe not, but when I go on a live workout and I work out with, with, with hundreds and thousands of women, I don't see them. They see me, but I feel the energy. I, 
I can't explain it to you. I, I sound crazy right now and people probably think I'm an absolute crazy psycho weirdo, but let them think what they want. When I'm like reading a DM, right? Or when I'm going live for a workout or when I add a new workout on and when I repost people, because you, you see, I repost a lot of people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and half the time I don't even tag tone a sculpt. I just repost the woman mm. with a sweaty selfie or whatever. And that to me, I almost feel like that's enough friends. Like I have friends for life. This is my family my unit, my team, my tribe. And as crazy as I may sound, I feel like that tribe understands me more than the people in my life. So that's when I go on social media and you see me understand that's me because I feel like we're friends and you get me. And it's crazy because they do get me and I get them. They get my sense of humor. They get me trying to dance on camera and be stupid. I don't care. I sometimes forget I have 2.3 million followers and I come... friends. Well, I sometimes forget, right? Have you seen that I come online and I don't have makeup on? I forget. I genuinely forget. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit, my skin's a bit crusty right now. And I just posted that <laughs> to 2.3 million people. What's my crazy ass thinking? And I sit back and I'm like, oh, fuck it. I don't care. But the nature of the internet is that you would, of course, you've got 2.3 million people. There's a lot of people in there that are hurting themselves and that want to make you feel like shit too. Can I be honest? I'm very lucky. Really? Yeah, I'm very lucky, man. I don't get much negativity. I don't. And when I do, um, if like someone's been horrible on, on a post, cause I have, I have a big insecurity about my boobs. All right. Like they're, they're saggy. I'll say it. And cool. I've always had a big, big insecurity about it. And I remember this one, one girl just ripped them to shreds. She was just like, ill, like they look disgusting and saggy. I didn't even see the comment until I started seeing the community members reply back to her. Now there's a difference between replying back to someone and being like, you need to stop. That was hurtful. And then replying back meanly. If you're replying back mean, that's not nice. Like you, you don't cure hate with hate. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I see someone being really nasty, someone, I don't like that. Like, I'd rather you not defend me. I don't want that. You don't know what that girl's going through just because she's being mean to me. You don't know what she's going through, the pain she must be in. You don't know. But when I see someone like, hey, sis, like you need to chill because that's not nice. You don't know what that comment could do to someone. That's a team. Mm. That's a community. That's a family right there. So I'm pretty blessed. I don't get as much negativity as maybe other people. I'm pretty, pretty blessed. Touch, touch where that doesn't change. Um, but listen, I, I don't know how to explain it to you. And I'm going to sound hella crazy right now, but... The, the community I have, man, it's something spe like special. It's something that is, it's unexplainable, the feeling they give me. And that to me is my friends. Mm. As weird as I may sound and lonely as I may sound. So some of the things you're working on, right? Yeah. So you've got a book coming out? Yes. Which is exciting. Tell me about this. So exciting. So I'm officially an author. Oh my God. <laughs> um, so my book, Do This For You, How To Be A Strong Woman On The Inside And Out, is not your average fitness book. So I'm pretty sick and tired of 20 day challenges and kind of telling women that, oh my God, do this 20 day challenge and you're going to lose 10 pounds. Hmm. Oh, shut up. It's draining, it's jarring, stop. I'm going to teach you how to create habits, discipline, consistency, longevity. That's what it's about. You know, all the programs on the Toner Sculpt app are, some of them are a year long. Fucking hell. That doesn't, yeah. doesn't kind of goes against the typical sales, sales uh, script of something with- you Status know, quo. Like small effort from you, big results. That's what sells, right? Yeah. Five days, you'll lose a hundred pounds. Yeah. You know, but that's very honest of you. And I think that's real, right? Yeah. No, you're not, you're going to lose weight. Of course, of course you're going to lose weight if you're doing stupid amounts of cardio, cutting out specific food groups and you're literally depriving yourself. Mm. Of course you're going to lose weight. Not sustainable. Is it sustainable? No. So the way I always say it is, funny enough, in a relationship, if you're constantly just like 
horrible to someone all the time is that sustainable not really you have to nourish you have to love you have to care you have to show effort consistency that's what works the same thing with training it's the constant effort you put in day in day out that will make a difference and so it's all about disciplines habits consistency. yeah and it's a book that do you know what in all honesty it's a book that i know when someone reads they're going to pass it down right got you it's one of those books you read it and it gets you thinking it's a thinking book. So I did the audio book for it as well last week. And when I was reading it, I was like, damn, that was, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, I know someone's going to read that. Like, yeah, yeah. Or listen to it like, yeah. And it's true. It's a thinking book. I ask you what your why is. So if I say to you, what, what is your why? Why is it that you want to train? <sighs> I've been over this a lot, but uh, I mean, like the thing that I keep trying to get my, uh, myself away from is having a really extrinsic why that's like, I want to look good for summer because when summer ends and I look good, that shit is done. There we go. <laughs> you know I mean? But that's a lot of people's yeah. whys. Yeah. I want to lose weight for my wedding dress. I want to lose weight for this, for an occasion, occasion, occasion. Yeah, timeline, timeline, yeah. The occasion comes, what then? You fall off a cliff, yeah. It's not a sustainable why. So I teach you how to gain a sustainable why, which is fundamentally the most important foundation you need for fitness. Mm. Then I teach you habits. You don't think twice about brushing your teeth. Why think twice about your health? Why think twice about your health? Your health is the most fundamental and important thing you need to live. You need to get one of them as well, right? And why are you thinking twice about it? Why are you viewing fitness as a chore? You're viewing your health as a chore? Hmm. That's a shame. Your body deserves more. When have you heard people speak about health like this? In a society where women are driven by fat loss pills and quick quick fad diets and intense workout sessions it's time to stop it's time to tell you that you need to calm the fuck down remember your why remember how important your health is and understand that if you have a bad day it's okay it's okay to have a bad day so that's what do this for you is all about sounds amazing i'm gonna read it thank you um, we'll, we'll link the pre-order as well in, in all of the, in the podcast and also on the YouTube video. I wanted to ask you what other things you're working on. I know you just launched a, an active wear line that looks pretty awesome. They are. God has so many issues with that to begin with, but we got there in the end, got there in the end. Honor active, um, honor active is fundamentally, I was actually building the, mi the mission and the vision for it last right. week. Um, and one of the things I said is that I don't want it to be a trendsetter why because i don't i don't want my brand to be something that people just kind of like buy because it's trendy and that's that i want on active to be something you go back to time and time again so all of our collections have certain names like the first collection is called classic because you're always going to come back to it it's designed with specific material that you always come back to it the next collection is called timeless mm. and then our winter collection is called effortless so it's designed to have a concept that it's your best friend always and forever. That it doesn't matter what year it is, you're still going to love Honor Active. Because trendsetters, they come and they go. You have sure. your 15 minutes fame and then it goes. Yeah. But I want something to be sustainable. If you look at Nike, Lululemon, the biggest brands in the world, they don't have fancy stuff. Some of the best Lululemon leggings are the most simplest ones you'll ever find, but they're trusted and they're loved. And that's exactly what I want Honor to be. I'm not here to start trends. Sorry, I'm not here to start trends. I'm here to ensure that you pick up your leggings and you trust this product. That's my goal for Honor Active. On to the next business. <laughs> no, Tona Skolf, this, Tona Skolf is still like obviously my number one baby and an Honor Active, of course. But what we done with Tone and Sculpt, um, we launched a brand new athlete, Danielle Wilson. I, I don't know saw. if you saw. I, I clicked on her profile. She followed me. I was quite... Uh, <laughs> she loves you. Oh, oh my really? gosh, she's going to be so excited. Really? Yeah, she's like, oh my God. <laughs> she always reposts you. And I was oh, like, really? yeah, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. She's like, oh my God, I love him. I'm like, yeah, he's all right. I'm um, joking. But now she is very special. Mm. Um, because I approached her... And the reason why I want to talk, talk about her briefly in this, in this podcast is because I think it's very important. She's a 200 pound African-American woman, five foot 11, 
not your average fitness guru, right? Mm-hmm. So why would Tona Sculpt want her? If she's not your average fitness guru, why would you want someone who women are scared to think that's what fitness looks like? Mm. Let me tell you why. Because fitness for such a long time is not about the way it looks. It's about the way it makes you feel. She trains because it makes her feel alive. She's an athlete. Yeah. She trains athletes. She is an athlete. She's built like an athlete. That's what I wanted for my brand. So when I approached her a year and a half ago, I slid into her DMs and I was like, I am every day inspired by you. And I didn't really think I wanted trainers, other trainers on the Tone and Sculpt app, but I I need you. I need you on this app. And she was like, what are you serious? Like, you really think I should be on the app? And I was like, hell yeah, you need to be on this app. You inspire me. I know you're going to inspire thousands of other women. And it's funny because when the whole Black Lives Matter thing happened, five other companies approached her in that month, five other fitness brands. And I had a a FaceTime with her and I said, listen, babe, if they're offering you more money and you think it's a better opportunity for you, I understand. Business is business. She goes, hell no, I'm married to you. (laughs) I'm not going anywhere. I'm married to you. She goes, but how funny is it that it took something happening for them to approach me Mm. I didn't say anything and I said to her I'm gonna let you answer that question yourself for yourself oh that that oh that week my my emails were blowing right up Black Lives Matter week I had more speaking requests more invitations to campaigns than I've ever had in my entire life you know what it is but I'm gonna be honest I'm gonna take the bag do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you're if you're approaching me because um, you think you suddenly have had this revelation that you need a black person involved, fine, fine. I can't find. Uh, you know what am I going to do? So say no, and then like they're going to have to go because in this go country some to find someone else. Yeah, they're not, and, and in this country, when you think about young black successful entrepreneurs, you me don't. and Jamal Edwards, there's and he, the guy who who made SBTV, who's been on this podcast, is fucking no one else. Like. They, are you going to have to start looking at footballers if you want young, black and successful? Yeah. And and so, yeah, fucking. And also I can use that platform as, as a way to inspire other people to change their opinions in the same way Obama inspired a lot of naive Americans to think that, oh my God, a black person can be smart and intelligent and clean. Don't, and, please. I could just. So yeah, I took the bags, every single bag, all mine. And you know what? I. And I'll keep taking them. Yeah. No. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, are you fucking joking me? I said, I, I looked at Daniel, I said to Daniel on the, on the FaceTime, it doesn't matter where you go. Mm. It matters what you're going to represent. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand that you're going to change a young girl's life by being somewhere, being present, being vocal, being ambitious? Do it. Mm. If the platform that's offering you more money is bigger, do it. Mm. She was like, no, I want to be at Tone of Skull. Of course, because you... Yeah, yeah, but that's just loyalty. That's just her sure. being loyal. But it goes beyond bringing another trainer onto the app. It's about representation. It's about, I'm sick and tired of fitness having one status quo. Fitness is not one status quo. It's about to help people mentally and physically. If it wasn't for fitness, I would not be alive today. And that's facts. So what's next for Chrissy? What's next? When you think about the future? Personally, I don't know business amazing yeah, yeah stuff that are coming up beyond um but from a personal perspective i don't know i really don't know i don't know what's even happening tomorrow in my personal life are you happy in what sense that's the question for what in what sense in, in your life are you happy um i would say i'm really happy in my career Mm -hmm. And I'm really happy in my community. Um, From a personal perspective, I think I need to just take a breather. And I would say I need to work on my happiness on a personal perspective a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. You're going to do that? (laughs) See, you're funny because you ask me the questions and you ask if I'm going to do it. And then I don't know the answer to that question because I don't know if I will do it. So I don't know. I think I just need to, I think I just need to be a bit more patient 
with myself and a little bit kinder to myself and less self-defensive. Listen, um, I've, I've taken a lot of your time and it's been a fascinating conversation. I've learned a lot about myself as well. Really? Yeah, it's like, you know, on many of these issues, they are, they're issues that anybody in the situation, you know, both me and you find ourselves in in life where we're running businesses and we're very busy, but then we're also trying to fulfill all of our personal needs at the same time when one of those, you know, facets of our life is so all consuming. We feel the same things and we're confused by it. We don't have the answers and... Mm -hmm as much as we want to have the answers and have control over everything mm -hmm. because we are used to that and we strive for that in our business, you know, sometimes we have to relinquish control in order to be happy. And maybe yeah. that's a lot of the answer, but thank you so much for giving me your time today, but more importantly, for giving me so much honesty. Um, and where can, where can people find you? I mean, you're everywhere. So yeah, dumb ass question. Yeah, everywhere and I'm joking. But like, <laughs> you know, you've got your book coming out, you've got your app, you've got your active wear line. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure people will find you. And um, I just want to say thank you because there's very few people out there that are A, willing to be honest. It takes a certain vulnerability to be that honest, but it does so much for so many people. And um, on behalf of your community, on behalf of entrepreneurs like me, on behalf of all of the aspiring wimp female entrepreneurs that are following in your footsteps, a huge thank you because what you're doing, it's costing you a lot, but it's giving the world even more. So thank you. Thank you so much. Oh,